jump, pick it, reach up to the moon. Girls, watch your back too. Twenty four carat magic in the air. It's a awesome beer. Look out, the pop pop is so done, so done. Guess who's back again? I'm back and this is LYB Grim Hammer here guys and I'm here to bring you the first video in a series of videos how to guides based on each ship of Dreadnought. We're starting with the Lorica so let's go ahead and jump right into it. What you're seeing now is my normal state. So at first we got the frontline broadside build so it's going to come with uh, plasma broadsides for that up close hitting damage. Jackal torpedoes for a little close range uh, extra damage. You got anti-missile lasers to keep the disruptors off you. Armor ramp you know so you can stay on the front line as long as possible. You're going to run retaliator to increase your cooldowns. You got destruction cascade, so when you pop somebody's your broadsides and torpedoes, you have a bunch of extra damage that pops in. Uh, of course, slow and steady to stack with armor ramp for that 100% resistance, and you're going to have to get on my good side for all that nice energy generation. This is a Super Saiyan. All right, guys, now we take a look at the Frontline Team Support build. Now, this build comes with Tartarus Missile. This has got the Purge new, basically. So what you're going to do is you're going to disrupt, you're going to drain, you're going to stasis them. Then we throw in some light missiles for a little added damage here and there on some uh, some selected targets. Then you want to go ahead and you got Armor Booster Pulse, which is going to keep, you know, your team with a little bonus armor. And you have Armor Ramp for yourself, you know, to keep you on the front line as much as possible. Now, here we go with Retaliator, as usual, for that cooldown reduction. Weapons 101 just gives yourself a little increased damage. Same with slow and steady, keep your 100% damage resistance, and then get on my good side for all that nice broadside energy building. You could just call this a Super Saiyan 2. All right, now we're going to take a look at the hyper aggressive pusher, the healer supported build. Now, this is when you're playing with your squad, you know, the guys are going to support you out through the battle and everything else. So, we're going to run uh, heavy flak as your secondary for that up close sustained damage. We're going to run scatter broadsides because with retaliator, the cooldown is almost nearly instantaneous. Same with flechettes, it's some close range burst damage. You're going to want to have and keep that armor booster pulse up for your healer who's going to stay with you as you push through the front line. Arm ramp as usual so you can stay alive. In case somebody dies, they can come back to you. Retaliator, always. Destruction cascade, same thing with the uh, scatter gun broadside. You're going to do all that damage and you're just going to keep constantly having destruction cascade going, constantly giving you more damage. Slow steady as usual for the armor ramp and same with get on my good side. And this, what he doing, is to go even further beyond. And last, we take a look at the hammer build. This is my hyper aggressive frontline reaper. This is the grim special. This is my solo build from when I'm playing by myself. We have heavy flak turrets, so you're just in the fight the whole time, up close and personal. You keep your scatter gun broadsides for that nice, just quick burst damage over and over again. Uh, flechettes, same thing with scatter broadsides, just burst damage. Stasis pulse, so you can kind of just lock them down and keep them in the middle of that fight while you just cut through them. Uh, armor ramp to kind of keep yourself, you know, in that fight as long as possible. Retaliator, as always, to keep your cooldowns going. And then you got Destruction Cascade for when you pop when you're just constantly getting damage buff after damage buff. Slow and steady, go ahead and mix it with that armor ramp, gives you 100% damage resistance, and then get on my good side for all that nice broadside energy regain. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, show some footage here from a match. Uh, this is using the hyper-aggressive frontline pusher. Uh, big thanks to my LYB clan mates, Naxrius and the Grim Haze for joining me on this fight. So we're going to head and cut right to the action here. Uh, we start moving in on the team. I'm putting some damage, you know, downrange on them uh, as we move up closer. I'm trying to, you know, slowly start getting my side angle towards them so I can get that get on my good side officer briefing energy. Um, I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna see a lot of disruption in this 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 fight. They're they're trying to keep me locked down. Uh, so you know, just right now, I'm pushing up on my team, I'm staying close to my healers, which is always very important. You as a dreadnought, you always want to stay next to your healers. You never wanna um, you never wanna get too far away from them because you're gonna overextend them. You're gonna put them in a bad position, and, and you really don't want to do that. You want to stay next to your healers. Don't make their job hard. You know, it's it's really nice, you know, to just stay near them at, at, at the best of times. So, you know, as you're gonna see here a lot, I'm gonna get disrupted. Like I said before, I'm gonna get disrupted a lot in this fight. 
Uh, so basically what I'm trying to do here is keep my position on my side so I get that energy regen. Uh, span my shields for that, you know, the, every little tick of cooldown reduction is, is going to help me, you know, majorly in this fight. Uh, so, you know, I'm slowly starting to try to push into my range on my modules and just, you know, just keep throwing them out there, man, because you're constantly going to get your shields back. You're constantly going to have cooldown reduction. All these modules that I, I use in this build have a very small cooldown time. So you're constantly able to just spam them as long as you can just keep throwing them out there. And so, you know, it, that's that's like the, the sole purpose of this build. It, it's just so nice having those almost instant cooldowns of most of your modules. And so, uh, as you can see here, we're going to slowly start pushing up towards their respawn. Uh, there's a nice purge set off right there. Go ahead and finish that guy off. Uh, go ahead and invulnerable block that, uh, that nuke right there. Uh, so I'm putting damage on this guy. I'm going to go ahead and just start hitting him with that spam scatter gun. Just spam it out on him. And you can see it just almost instant cooldown as it's just coming back up every time. And it's so nice to be able to just put damage out like that. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start slowly repositioning here to start moving in. And, you know, you got to watch. You got to watch. Make sure, as, as I said before, you don't want to overextend too much. And I slowly start to overextend a little too much there. Grim Haze has to jump in on me, kind of keep his beam range to me. And so uh, I'm going to keep pumping damage into this guy here. Go ahead and switch around to some heavy flak. Put some damage out there and uh, slowly start getting him down. There he goes. He's gone. And uh, start moving up towards this dread here. Now, fighting another dread is a little tricky because it's basically, you know, a battle of the armor ramp. You know, you're going to have that time where you're just like, okay, well, I'm not doing any damage to you. I pop my armor ramp. Hey, you're not doing damage to me. We're just going to sit here side by side and just wait it out until somebody wears down first. So, his kind of armor ramp drop. We just go ahead and pump that damage into him, drop him out the fight. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and i oh, got the bag over my head, so i uh, got to wait a little bit to see where I'm going. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start moving it back in on their uh, their team that they've respawned in the, uh, the hillside over here. Uh, we slowly start moving up, putting damage into uh, the lower health targets. Um, and, and as you can see, I'm kind of slowly moving up on my team. I'm making sure, you know, the group's there. Uh, you want to make sure always that you, you know you're, you're you're centered in with your group. Uh, slowly start putting damage on this guy. We we'll go ahead and uh, start working them down. Block that nuke. Always, you know, you always want to try to parry them, and you know, you always want to be blocking with your shields. If you got the energy, you're not armor ramp. You want to go ahead and and definitely be using your your shields. You know, energy's there. You want to use it. You know, never never don't die with full energy. That that's super important. Never die with full energy, and. Um, so we go ahead and we start pushing up here again. Uh, they're, they're getting they're getting armor boost pulsed. So kind of just trying to do as much damage as we can to them, kind of break them down. Um, team starting to spawn into the back line over there. We're gonna go ahead and focus on this dreadnought here. Uh, start putting him down, slowly putting damage into him. Uh, as you can see, he's got the armor booster pulse. He's running double armor. He's got armor booster pulse. He's got armor amp, which. Um, you know that's exactly what I'm running, and it's very it, to be against that. It, it's it's annoying because he has dual ways of getting armor, and it it makes you last a lot longer in a fight. Uh, which, as you can see there, it took us a little while to break him down. Um, and, and that's another thing nice about armor booster pulse. You're going to see offensive support when your team gets kills while they're under the effect of your pulse, which is nice points. You know, as a dreadnought. Uh, so as you can see, we got another new coming in here. I'm going to go ahead and see it go off screen. And I'm just going to kind of, kind of keep pushing up, you know. And um, see us uh, start putting damage on this destroyer here as he kind of moves up forward. Uh, and, and that's another thing, too, with the Lorica. Fighting against the blood is uh, it's a pretty fun brawl, man. You, you both have the same health. He has a lot more DPS than you. So uh, it can get entertaining, you know. It can get really fun. And uh, so there goes the Purge. Now I'm pretty much locked out of everything. And I'm kind of just spamming my shields as getting on a good side hits me. Uh, you can see some nice little accolades going there. I'm just waiting for them cooldowns to start so I can I can start using my modules again. Uh, pesky little pop up. Thank you, virus software. Go away now. Uh, get back here. And um, so now I'm just trying to put out as much damage as I can. Frontline freak. I'm, I'm getting them tank points going. Uh, super nice XP there, you know, just getting into the thick of it, getting all this tank, this tanking points. 
Uh, here goes another Disruptor Missile. I, I can spam with these the whole match. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, they, they, they did a very good job at uh, locking me down uh, for a good portion of the fight here. Uh, go ahead and move him back in on their ball there. I mean, this this fight right here, this, this whole match was pretty much just a toe-to-toe -to -toe brawl. Once we got into the thick of it, we, we stayed head to head and it was it was a really enjoyable fight uh, so you know we're going to start working on them some more here trying to wear them down uh, at this point if I'm not mistaken they have two healers T4 healers down there below them and uh, those two healers are doing a very good job of keeping their team up as we try to force some damage onto them and, and slowly uh, break them down here so um, I'm, I'm going to continue to keep pushing up uh, and notice how I rotate side to side as I push up, and that's to keep getting the benefit of get on my good side. Because uh, to get on my good side, all that energy with link with Retaliator, it's just going to just keep getting your cooldowns. Super important to be able to keep doing that, and it's it's very nice to have a nice teammate purge so we can go ahead and finish off this guy. Yep, there he goes. He's out. Definitely done. And, um, you know, teammate purges is just so nice to have in a fight. It, it's super nice. And so we're going to keep pushing up here some more. Uh, try to drop down another one. Uh, I'm going to ahead and start turning my way in. I'm trying to hit him with Flax. Was he kind of out of the range? In which Flax also has a, a wonky range. It says like 1.3, but you can sometimes hit 1.6. It's, it's kind of odd. Uh, go ahead and push right in on their healer. I'm going to get right next to them and put all that scatter gun broadside, heavy flag damage on them. And I'm just going to keep the pressure up on them. I'm going to make them either run away or we're going to melt them down. Uh, one of the two. Start putting my damage out. Now, as you can see here on my mini map, I have overextended. I have made a uh, mistake here. I, I overextended. My team is slowly pushing back up to me. Uh, but, you know, keep that in mind. This is a hyper-aggressive build, and um, sometimes you overextend. Sometimes you do, and it can get a little rough. And uh, my team is trying to come back and support me. Uh, I, I pretty much stay low health through this part, and uh, they finally break me down here, and uh, I go down. And, I mean, that that's pretty much my mistake. I push too far outside of the range of my healers, and I put myself in a bad position and therefore I would have put my healer in a bad position had he come in there and try to rescue me and you don't want to do that you really don't want to do that as a dreadnought pilot um, like, like I said this is a perfect example uh, that's why I use this for the video it, it shows a really bad mistake here um, guys were able to pretty much finish it up and get that win and so uh, I mean that that's pretty much it guys you want to watch your positioning you want to make sure you're not overextending, you know, watch your energy management with get on a good side once you're in a fight. Your energy management is going to be kind of nice because you're going to have a, a large pool of it here. Uh, you can see the tanking score there. Nice 3195. Very high score. Um, that's pretty much offensive support mixed in with uh, a lot of tanking XP. Uh, you can see the little uh, accolades here. 13 kills. Uh, it's not too bad with my hyper aggressive build. Uh, as you can see, we only had one death, really, uh, in the video. Uh, nice little reward uh, spread, 10k XP. Like I said, 13 and 1. Uh, wasn't terribly too bad of a round, and um, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, this was it for the Lorica Guide. Um, you know, if you like what you see, throw me a subscribe. There will be more guides in the future. Uh, next planned is uh, another Dreadnought Guide, uh, the Verones. So stay tuned for that and fly safe.